The First Law of Magic, Chapter 1, Part 3 Horror. It was a word that brought forth images of movie screens, plays, and for the unfortunate few, real pain and death that they witnessed. They know nothing of horror, Celestia thought grimly, though she was proud of the peace that she had enabled in the quiet mundane lives that her ponies now lived. She would be forever unable to enjoy such a peaceful and quiet life. Hers was a lonely life, being the last alicorn and having no other true immortals that she could call friends. The passage of time buried all of her friends and loved ones. Loneliness could be conquered, and it wasn't the yearning for another true immortal in her life that drove her to be so apart from her ponies. Rather, it was the fact that she had experienced true horror. It wasn't a recreation by an actor on a screen or a stage. She had seen and done things that could only be described as truly horrific. Any pony with any experience in history knew that the princess had experienced first hoof all of the horrors brought forth by every war and conflict Equestria had ever fought. Though some like to believe that they did, no pony could truly grasp what that meant in this day and age. They were naive and small, unaltered by the effects of fear and unhaunted by decisions forced upon them. Celestia sighed, her breath leaving a slow shrinking circle of perspiration on the window. Beyond the gilded confines of her castle, she could see the first early risers getting started on their day and heading out into the world. A millennium ago, she would have enjoyed the scene playing out before her. The morning ponies already out for a jog before work, saying their hellos to the neighbors, and a few others who enjoyed the same routine. The weary, not-so-morning ponies, who got up anyway either for their health or work, used to draw a chuckle from the Sun Princess, as she sipped away at her morning tea and watched them go about their grumpy routine. However, now it only drew the faintest of interest at the best of times, and uncharacteristic scowls at the worst. It certainly didn't help her mood that night, and thus sleep had been ruined by the reminder that the horror that she had sacrificed so much to stomp out still remained in her pure and peaceful world. The things that she had done to protect the peaceful lives of her ponies and ensure that they didn't have to see what she had were the driving force of her life these days. But if the public knew what she had done, they would have crucified her, and she would hardly blame them. They hadn't done or seen the things that she had. They never had been forced to choose between life and death, and been equally as tempted to choose one over the other. Celestia sighed once more, and turned from the window. She took a gentle sip from her morning coffee that was still a little too cold for her taste. She placed the cup back down on the enchanted saucer, and the pot back onto its burner, waiting for it to heat up. Meanwhile, her mind was elsewhere. Away from this place, and even this time. Far, far away. A long time ago, in a place surprisingly close to this one, the memories returned. And with a vengeance. The screams of the dying, their anguish-filled screams of pain echoing throughout the battlefield. She didn't know which side they belonged to, but this far into the melee it hardly mattered, and could barely be determined. Early on in the war, she was cocky and careless. She had the most well-trained troops equipped with the most up-to-date arms and armor with the backing of almost every successful mage Equestria had at the time. But still, her sister resisted. Luna had gone out into the countryside to the towns and villages that popped up in the shadow of the Everfree, and there she had raised a great peasant army. Celestia had laughed at the mention of her little army, of course. To think an army of potters, farmers, bakers, and other lay ponies could stand up to a well-disciplined and supplied professional army was simple madness. And what came after their forces clashed was madness on a scale that the Solar Princess had never before experienced or even imagined. Renegades, exiles, and those few ponies who valued knowledge over ethics had always made their home in the vast forest that had perpetually been beyond Canterlot's reach. But they were few and far between. Or so Celestia thought. There, amongst the twisted branches of the chaotic wood, they had grown and prospered. Some even went as far as to form villages, covens, and enclaves of their own. Celestia had always cursed her inability to govern the scattered townships at the edge of the Everfree, and the stubborn independence that they all seemed to have. Despite generations of isolation and no official contact with Luna or the beast that she became, they almost all flocked to her banner. The wood had given them the isolation and freedom that they had wanted, but it also gave them a cruel and twisted gift, perverting their bodies and minds and twisting them into beings that could hardly be called ponies anymore. Great rock-like equines with the strength of several Earth ponies thundered throughout the battlefield, wheeling stone shoes or simple clubs that crumbled her soldier's field place like a child's toy. The strange rock-like ponies' injuries never seemed fatal, and their deaths were never permanent. Ponies more akin to spiders than the equines they had originally been descended in droves, wielding strange silken armor that turned against blade and spell alike with impunity. Their many legs granted them speed and dexterity that only her Pegasus forces could match. Although they could neither fly nor cast complicated magic, they were whirlwinds of death, 
that wielded more weapons than her normal soldiers could ever attempt, with an ease that spoke of decades of practice. The descendants of farmers and fools that had tried to cultivate the Everfree were perhaps the most savage of the lot. Some seemed barely above beasts, snarling and vicious with hides as tough as bark and a bite that was far worse. They tore through flesh and armor with tooth and claw, and shrugged off all but the most concentrated attacks. Bang like wolves, they attacked in packs and dragged off those soldiers not lucky enough to be killed in the initial onslaught. Even the very Everfree itself seemed to resist the Sun Princess, hordes of great beasts pouring out from the twisted wood in all shapes and sizes. Timberwolf packs hounded the supply lines with an intelligence that they had never seen before. Manticores clad in silver armor broke the ranks of her ponies and then vanished before they could even be dispatched. Even the woodland creatures that seemed too small to be of importance fought against the solar incursion. Bunnies, squirrels, rats, and other small creatures swarmed over the army's food, eating nearly everything and befouling anything that they couldn't. Worse still were the Lunar Pegasi, faster, stronger, and more brutal than their Featherwings cousins. They were well-drilled, well-disciplined, and held together every other race and sub-race the Nightmare brought to bear, carrying an air of leadership that rallied her sister's forces wherever they went, all the while holding a nearly fanatical belief in her sister's selfish cause. Repelling these attacks and forcing unit cohesion after the chaotic and brutal melee nearly broke the Sun Princess's army, and she was forced to reveal her race far before she had wanted. Bringing forth the full force of her connection to the sun, she bathed the battlefield in light and flame, scorching friend and foe alike. Though her own troops were resistant to the sun's rays, some still fell to their princess's attack. In the end, it had paid off, and the creatures born in the darkness were either killed or scattered away. From that terrifying display of power, a fear of the light was born in those lucky few that had survived the sun's onslaught that would last generations. The terror of the unbound sun being passed down from parent to child for centuries after that devastating assault. With the first wave defeated and their supply lines resecured, the Solar Army marched onward, drawing closer and closer to the Everfree with each passing hour. Her troops' morale was low, but holding, the demonstration of power being enough to reaffirm her ponies' faith in her abilities. What happened after that was true horror, the likes of which made the destruction of war look like child's play. The necromancers revealed themselves and raised a vast army of the dead that had been hastily abandoned the day before, sandwiching the solar guard between the dead and the living. Celestia shuddered, a tear running down her muzzle. She then pushed the memory away with frantic insistence. Please don't make me remember. She begged whatever greater being might have been listening. Please don't remind me how my pony suffered and what I did to her. The memories wouldn't be stopped. Even after centuries, they were too vivid and far too horrible to ignore. Celestia whimpered and squeezed her eyes closed tighter, images of horror long past flashing before her mind's eye. Images of her soldiers' limbs sloughing off of their bodies while they were still alive, rot taking them before they even had been felled in battle. The bodies of their brothers and sisters in arms rising back up after a fatal stroke only to turn onto the nearest pony with a ruthlessness that could only be born to mindlessness. No, 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 please, please stop, I'm picking you. Tears fell from the princess's face, pooling onto the floor beneath her. Cuts that showed only the first symptoms of infection suddenly became gangrenous, having to be amputated within seconds only for the stump to become infected and a swift death becoming the only reprieve. The earth beneath her ponies died. From tip to root, every blade of grass perished while torrential rains pounded flesh and earth alike, turning the battlefield into a quagmire. The sins that she committed in the face of the atrocities, the blood that she had spilled in hate, all of it flashed before her eyes, reminding her of her deeds. And then it was gone, replaced by the sound of boiling coffee cascading over the sides of the pot while her cup bubbled quietly. Celestia shook her head and blinked away the tears. She had a job to do. She swallowed the boiling hot cup of coffee, quickly pouring herself another, and then turned off the burner. With her second cup held aloft in her magic, she forced herself towards the door. She had a kingdom to run and no time to shed tears for past mistakes. At the behest of Axon, the parents of Twilight Sparkle ultimately decided not to send her to a public school. Instead, they decided to homeschool Twilight until a surprise invitation from Celestia's school for gifted unicorns arrived one day at their door. Said invitation came in from none other than their esteemed leader herself. P princess Celestia? Stuttered the much, much older looking mare known as Twilight Velvet. She quickly ducked into a bow so deep that she nearly face-planted when her aged knees nearly gave out on her, her long gray hair brushing onto the ground as she bowed. A calm, serene smile sprang easily to the monarch's face. Please dance. There's no need for such formality today. Simply, just call me Celestia. The aged mare scrambled back to her hooves. Twilight Velvet, your highness. This caused the monarch to stop for a moment. Oh? I had assumed you was a caretaker of some kind. You seem older than the last picture that I saw. 
The mare coughed nervously and rubbed the back of her neck. Yes, well, raising two foals can take a lot out of you. <sighs> More than you know. Celestia thought darkly. So it seems. May I come in? The alicorn asked. Of course, come on in. The smaller mare stood to the side and closed the door gently behind the alicorn as she made her way inside. This is kind of unrelated to what's happening, but I wonder if Nightlight is in the house or if he's away. Because that can change up the whole conversation quite a bit. Anywho, let's get on to our superior donators. Top donators TacoCat598, Peter Coldhard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, Ponyman, and Gauntlet. Zar630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Dospo, Madman Stan, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, Runescythe9852, Hunter Norman, Dash of Evergreen, Rhymey Dragonwolf, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brother and Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Sky Ochia, Leslie Prickett, Jordan Peterson, Crimson Kits and A9, Lightskin, Monster Kitty, Tim Bob, Starlight Glimmer, Lightning Blitz, Squiddy Boy, Deputy Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Hunter Mara, Alex F, Rainbow Dash, Teal Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Zach Rakow, Mystery CU, Edgar Garcia, One Kingdom One, Nissa Rusan, Vazuri, Dyslexic Character Sheets, Just a Random Boy, Hodrick Plencart, A Crazy Person, Ponyman365, Neapolitan, Six of Nine, Shyfire, Stamp, and Zion Baseri. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.